It's time for Wretched Radio with Todd Friel. Shocked. I am absolutely shocked. And oh, so disappointed. (sighs) This is Wretched Radio. So many people agog. They're simply agog. They can't believe the conclusions of a man who decided, because apparently he's got a lot of COVID free time, to listen to 18 hours of sermons from nine of America's biggest churches. And people are reading his summary of those sermons and they're acting like this is a blast of new information. If you have been listening to almost any sermon from virtually any super mega high profile preacher, not all of them, but many of them, and forget the mega church part from so many evangelicals these days, you will notice something is missing. And that something would be the gospel, the very basics, the very essence of the Christian faith. It can be alluded to, it's referenced, you hear it vaguely off in the distance, but rarely in most, not all, evangelical churches, you will only hear a whisper, bits, pieces of the gospel. And that has been going on for decades. And so when I read this article from ninemarks.org, hence the nine churches they chose. I wasn't shocked. This came out last week. I actually buried it. <laughs> it's something that we've talked about here so many times. I whole Ad hummed nauseum. it. But when I started reading the responses of people, I went, oh, wow. There are so many people who are not aware of this absolute trend that is probably the biggest and worst trend in the church. We aren't preaching the gospel. Is it any wonder you hear what you hear on Witness Wednesdays here on Wretched? When we go to the campuses, hey, are you a Christian? Yeah, cool, tell me the gospel. Huh? And it happens over and over again, and there's no wonder. And here is why so many of these preachers get a pass. Because you know the gospel. And you perhaps sit in a church and you hear them reference something. And you think, well, there it is. There's the gospel right there. And I would say, oh, no, it isn't. It isn't the whole gospel. It isn't the gospel explained in a contextual way that allows the hearer to go, I get it. I understand that thing. Instead, they'll hear things. Maybe the pastor will have enough courage to use the S word, sins. And you know... Our sins are forgiven, and you go, well, there's the gospel. Well, it's a line about the gospel, but we're talking about presenting it in a way where the individual who is not regenerated can go, look, I get it already. I understand God's character and nature. I understand that I deserve his wrath. I understand Jesus took it for me. I understand he rose from the dead. I understand that I need to repent and put my trust in Jesus Christ. The individual in a church who is not regenerated should either get annoyed by hearing the gospel or skedaddle. They shouldn't be able to sit there comfortably and go, the gospel, with the what? Can can we get back to how I can improve my dating life, man? Because that's really helpful stuff for me, which is what most of the sermons from these mega churches and oh, so many like it. And that, that, that's what they are. They're life enhancement service sermons, how to do be a better, how to become more, how to live a life of. Then that is dating. You think I'm kidding about the dating sermon series? I'm not one of these mega church pastors preaches on did a whole series on it why because we have abandoned expository preaching for what the pagans want to hear this comes back to the word that is it demands we pay attention and that word is pragmatism when we ask the wrong question how do we fill up this place how do we keep people coming you are going to end up with a summary of sermons like this from nine marks you're going to abandon the hard things don't talk about sin and god's wrath they don't want to hear that we've got to keep them coming back for more so what do we do we shave off the hard edges we water down the truth of god's word and turn it into something that is an oprah presentation that you could get any day of the week watching oprah winfrey 
how to live a better your what your uh, is she, no she's not best life what is her thing she's whatever her life enhancement mantra is look today. at me look at me look at me <laughs> well that's her life verse not her mantra that's different joey please you need to be watching more oprah i take that back <laughs> immediately no one this needs that. is the result of asking the question how do we keep them coming how do we fill up the churches and the reason that we are seeing different polls about the illiteracy of Americans is because of pragmatism. Because we're doing whatever it takes to keep them coming back for more. Let me see if I can find that study here. There was another study that was done on how much people know that are actually attending church about the Bible. And I think the percentage, now this is all Christians, evangelicals slightly higher. Would you like to guess the number of percent, the percentage of professing Christians in this country who seem to know anything about the Bible at all? Want to want to give it a shot, boys? 40, 40 (laughs) percent. Thank you, Joey. Bless your heart. And I don't mean that in the Southern kind of way. I want it to be a large number and it's not going to be. It's not even going to be double digits. So don't hold your breath for anything positive. Six percent. No, that's six percent. That's it. Six percent know any just how the bible works the rest who profess to be christians no clue why because we're not giving them a clue from the article four hours of sermons from each of the country's nine biggest evangelical churches bless his heart that's 36 sermons number one the gospel at best is assumed most of the time it's entirely absent i'm shocked absolutely shocked the good news of jesus christ life death and resurrection was unclear in 36 out of 36 sermons <laughs> now that's a high percentage that's a bigger number often some or all of these facets of the christian gospel left out writing no gospel in my notes became common I don't mean to say various elements of the gospel weren't occasionally mentioned, but it's unclear exactly why they were mentioned and what they had to do with me. This is something that we cannot be aware of, and this is why we all need to be etch-a-sketches. When we present the gospel, when we evangelize, clear your brain, pretend that you know nothing. Now present the gospel. Pretend that the individual who is hearing you knows zip. For instance, I ventured out to the grocery store. We still get to do that for now. And there was a, the, the fellow who was behind the plexiglass shield had uh, two earrings. And he, was, he was from Barbados, real groovy dude, two earrings. And he had, they were crosses. Well, that to me is like saying, please witness to me. So I did. I just asked him a question. Nice, really likable fellow. Well, why do you wear those earrings? What's the symbolism? What's the meaning to it? And his response was, <laughs> I've never been asked that. I'm not shocked. And so I said, do you, do you, do you know what they mean? And he said, I have, they're jewelry. I have absolutely no idea. Wait a second. You're telling me you have no idea what those what the cross represents? No. Grew up in Barbados, found his way to Boston, and now he's in Atlanta. He went to church a little bit with his grandmother, who was a Baptist. His ex-wife took him to church, but he didn't find that of interest, and he could not explain what the cross represents. How can somebody go to church without hearing about that? These people that are rejecting the gospel have no idea what they're rejecting because they've never heard it put in a way that makes sense. Ask anybody who witnesses on a somewhat regular basis and they will tell you, people thank them. I had no idea. I've never heard this before. This is all just a blast of information to me. You mean that's what they were talking about in Sunday school? You mean that's what Palm Sunday was all about? You mean that's why we celebrate Easter? I had no idea. Why? Because of pastors who don't preach the gospel. They assume that people understand it. And the problem is we give them a pass because we do get it. Oh, he said Jesus died for sins. That's, that's the gospel. But imagine you're an etch sketch You got no information. You're completely erased. You're a blank slate. Would that person get it? 
Would they know who Jesus is? Would they know why he had to die? Do they know the consequence and punishment for sins? Do they know what he accomplished by dying for our sins? Do they know anything about imputed righteousness? Did they hear anything about the resurrection? Do they understand the call to salvation is repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved? No, because it was a drive-by gospel presentation and people are not getting it. People aren't responding wrongly to the gospel. They're not hearing the right gospel. And this has been going on for decades. Thank you, seeker-sensitive movement, the king of pragmatic movements that determined, we're going to go ask the pagans what they want to hear so we can fill up our church buildings. And what did we end up doing? We'll talk about the gospel on Wednesday night. That got shoved to the wayside to boot. And so they never hear it when they attend these churches and to the people who are shocked by this study of 36 sermons from the nine largest evangelical churches in the country to you i say welcome (laughs) welcome may this be the beginning of a long-standing trend where we warn people of preachers who don't preach the gospel this is wretched radio Behold a world without wretched. Please become a gospel partner 